Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For this tutorial, we have another fall wedding cake. Um, wedding cakes seem to be <laughs> the going thing with me right now, but that's okay. And this one is a buttercream ruffle ombre cake. And each cake was a hexagon. So I'm going to show you how to do this. First of all, we're going to make my little cheat of how to make a hexagon shape when you don't have the pans. What I did, as you can see, was made a circle the size of the cake. Then, I'm then I fold the parchment paper in half, and then cut it in thirds, draw a line between the two points, cut straight across, and ta-da, you have a hexagon. Now I used this template to cut the cake as well as to cut the cake boards so that they were cut to size. And actually, it looks like I used the cake board itself, didn't I? Yes, I did this cake a few weeks ago, so I'm trying to remember what I did as I'm going here. So I used the template, obviously, to cut the board, and then, um, yeah, use that as my template. Pretty easy. It's a very easy shortcut for how to make a hexagon without a pan. So my little helpful hint there. So I'm going to show you how I fill and do one cake. Um, this is a four tier, so it's the same thing four times. We don't need to go over it four times. You can watch me do it one time. And I am damming in between the layers with a thickened buttercream. I do a thin layer of buttercream in between there, and then I did my raspberry filling. Not every tier was this combination of flavors, but it doesn't really matter because I'm not showing you anyway. <laughs> And then I did a quick little crumb coat over the whole thing before setting it in the refrigerator to set up. And I'm just, just kind of roughly um, smoothing it. I know I'm going to do at least one more coat, and I think I did two more coats on top of this because um, hexagons and shapes like that, they have a lot of edges, need a lot of coats. Here I wanted to show you, see... I had some spillage. It set in the refrigerator overnight, and you can see I had a little oopsie doopsie. And this is how I fix it. I used really thickened buttercream. I scrape out where the boo boo happened, <laughs> and then I fill it back in with a very thickened buttercream. Like I could make a ball out of this buttercream. It has that much powdered sugar added to it. I'm not going to do that, but I could. Um, and that's a, just a really good way to fix when this happens. See, it happens to me too, guys. Things that aren't always perfect. I just do a lot of editing. But I do like to show you when I have something that happens, that happens to a lot of people, and show you how you may be able to deal with it. And I put it back in the refrigerator to chill. And now I'm doing my second, yes, my second coat. And to get my corners, I like to pack it in with buttercream there first. I do that with my sheet cakes also when I do sheet cakes, which I've never shown you guys sheet cakes. Is that something you want to see? I guess you see one sheet cake, you've seen them all kind of thing, um, especially wedding ones. They're not birthday cake type. But anyway, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in and how I frost my sheet cakes. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm using my scraper to pull in from the corner into in between the two corners. Does that make sense? So that you're... Um, keeping the bulk of the buttercream on that corner instead of scraping it down into a, um, a softened edge. You don't want that. Especially, and this is my third coat, put it back in the refrigerator to, to chill again. Um, especially since this cake, short story here, um, the picture they had as their inspiration was actually a fondant ruffle cake, and they did not want fondant. So the challenge that was presented to me was to make it ruffle, but also hexagon. My fear was that hexagon, you're not, you're going to lose the shape of your hexagon with thick ruffles in anything, um, fondant or buttercream. So I ended up using a smaller tip. I wanted to use a larger tip to get more of a ruffle effect, but I was afraid you're going to lose the entire hexagon shape. So we went with a smaller one and I think it still turned out beautiful. And this is how I am doing my crumb coat for the ombre. I'm using the color I used for this buttercream was a little bit of terracotta and a little bit of ivory uh, because they wanted a peachy champagne -y ombre effect. Now any um, champagne color 
or anything like that, a satiny look to it. What gives it that is airbrushing some, um, what you call it, pearl luster on top. Otherwise, a champagne is just tan or, or pale peach. Um, and it's that shine, that shimmer, that pearl that makes it look like the fabric color. Okay, so I ombre the, um, the crumb coat. That's where I'm going to change my colors with my ruffles. I was like uh, two-thirds of the bottom tier. Basically a third of each color. Because as we go up, it's going to be going into just the off-white on the top. And then I just kind of did them askew. You kind of have to be careful when you are doing that with shaped like squares or hexagons, anything with corners, because your corners from side to side are going to be wider than the flat spot from side to side. So you need to make sure that your edges are not poking out over the edge. So I did a more subtle effect. And once I have these all stacked up, I used a sharpened dowel straight through all the cakes just to keep them where they are and just um, a security blanket because my boss was going to deliver this all, all stacked. I don't know how she does it. She's a stronger woman than I am. I would probably, this is the tip I'm using. It's just your regular pedal tip, a Wilton pedal tip. Now you can watch me as I'm going here. I'm just holding the tip out at a slight angle. You don't want to hold it out too far of an angle because those ruffles will um, flop down. You can see a few of them started to, but when you do your next row, you kind of push it back up again. I forgot what I was saying. Anyway, we're, we're just winging this like normal, so sometimes I forget what I was saying. So we're doing this all the way down the cake. And I like to brush or use the scraper to remove the bulk off the bottom. That's the thicker part of the tip. Um, otherwise, I think it kind of bulks up your cake too much. And that's what I'm doing with the scrapers, kind of scraping that down a little bit so it's not so thick. And then I use the brush here and there too. I kind of alternated between the two. I get tired of one and I went to another. And, and the ombre was made with that bottom color. I started with that color and then I just added white to it to get the, the three different shades. I'm going to do this all the way to the bottom. And a little trick. Once you get your ruffles on, leave it at room temperature or in the refrigerator for a few, you know, 10 minutes maybe for it to crust over a little bit. And then you can kind of push those ruffles into place once it's crusted over. And I'm just using my airbrush to do the pearl sheen. You can see that it was, that was the, the pearl I used. That was airbrush, airbrush um, spray with my airbrush, my cordable airbrush, and I'll add a link where you can get one of those for yourself in the description below. And you can kind of see, I hope you can see anyways, the difference before and after I added the pearl sheen. Because before, I mean, it was just a pretty ombre. Now it looks more satiny. I like pearl because it kind of neutralizes colors. I am noticing a lot more of going using that sheen again, um, the luster dust, things like that. And I'm all for it because that's what we were doing when I first started doing cakes. And I like to see old trends coming back again. And then I'm just attaching some silk flowers. You can use real flowers. And if you were to do that, I would wrap the stems um, and preferably stick a straw in there and stick your flowers in there. Sometimes I do just wrap the stems and then I add some buttercream and stick the flowers into there. Everybody has their opinion on what's the correct way to do that, and that's just how I do it. So there it is all done. I think it's really pretty. I like the irregular ruffles. I think that really gives it character. And I hope you learned something from it, and I hope you give it a, a go, and we'll catch you on the next one. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to check out my other social media, I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much.
and we'll catch you on the next tutorial.